Good Saturday morning. This is Kim Blaylock with SDG Replace coming to you on this Saturday morning, July 29th. And up riding er bright and early at 6.10 a.m. here in North Carolina. And I'm wanting to get some Legends of Wrestling in this morning. Continuing in my Tar Heel State Federation Heavyweight Championship Tournament. We are in the final rounds. We're in the semifinals. And we're going to crown a champion today. We're going to have the two semifinals matches and then on to the finals. Our first semifinal matchup is going to find Blackjack Mulligan facing off against Buddy Rogers. And the second semifinal is going to have Bob Orton Jr. facing out, out against Bruiser Brody. So two exciting matchups to come. So join me as we jump into this this morning. Blackjack Mulligan, Buddy Rogers. Take a look at each man's card. Just do one thing. Make sure, yep, we're good. Blackjack Mulligan has a pretty straightforward card. He does have a finisher, the Blackjack Claw. It's a plus two finisher. He pins at a two. Uh, he will have the advantage over Buddy Rogers in power. He's a minus three, as Buddy Rogers is a minus one. But Buddy Rogers much more agile as he's minus two, and Blackjack Mulligan is plus two. So we have Blackjack Mulligan's card. Now let's take a look at Buddy Rogers. Buddy Rogers has that devastating uh, finishing hold that figure four grapevine is a plus four finisher. So if he locks that on uh, the great majority of the time, he is going to finish his uh, opponent. He, he pins at a one, so he's much more difficult to pin. And again, he has the agility advantage. Uh, he has an advantage in the ropes and the turnbuckle while Blackjack Mulligan has a, the advantage in the ring rating, and Buddy Rogers does have the better de death jump of B, where Blackjack Mulligan is C. So let's get their arc pulled back up, and let's get into this match. Let's roll for initiative. Blackjack Mulligan rolls an 11, and Buddy Rogers a 5. Blackjack Mulligan going on the offensive with the Body slam. He does have the power. He comes in and immediately scoops Buddy Rogers up and slams him down with authority. And it, rolling for the pin right away on Buddy Rogers as he covers him quickly. And kick out on a roll of four but that will add a fatigue to Buddy Rogers as Blackjack Mulligan is wasting no time in this match. And he eye rakes. Buddy Rogers, Buddy Rogers hurt by that eye rake, going to level two, clubbing forearms. Days one, grinding armbar. Days one, elbow to the neck, but that's an agility and Buddy Rogers has the agility, so he will reverse on level two. He hits him with a pile driver as he kicks Blackjack in the gut as, and lifts him up and pile driver. Hurt two. He will toss Blackjack into the turnbuckle. But he reverses as Buddy Rogers... Uh, approaches blackjack comes off the turnbuckle with a skull splitting running lariat and he rolls on level three offense and he will toss buddy rogers out of the ring blackjack comes out grabs him and smashes him into the announcer's table with that running lariat again, he knocks him into the announcer's table, but he will they will roll onto the DQ on Blackjack. 
and he is not disqualified, and he'll roll on level three offenses. He's got Buddy Rogers reeling outside of the ring. He gives a back elbow ram as he comes into the ring. And down three, and he will leave the ring. But he'll crawl helplessly back into the ring to meet the referee's count. Back elbow ram again as Blackjack is on the offensive against Buddy Rogers. Hurt two. Running stomp. Hurt two. Blackjack again with that running stomp. But Buddy Rogers moves out of the way and reverses on level two and tosses Blackjack into the ropes. And as Blackjack comes off the ropes, Rogers hits him with a running back elbow. Dazed one. He's still dazed. Rogers slaps Black Jack in the face and struts around the ring. Days one. Another slap to the face of Black Jack Mulligan. How much of this will Black Jack take? He won't take it anymore as he reverses on two. He gives that running stomp to Rogers once again. Days one. He picks him up and does that body slam once again, that level three body slam. And we're rolling for the pin on Rogers once again. Target is two. The roll is an eight, but that's another fatigue, second fatigue point on Rogers, as this has been all blackjack mostly this whole match. And he slaps the blackjack claw in a plus two finisher. The target will be a four. The roll is a four, and Black Jack Mulligan has upset Buddy Rogers, and he moves on to the finals as Buddy Rogers is outraged, but he succumbed to the Black Jack claw, and that is this, this match. Amazing that Black Jack Mulligan moves forward, and who I had as the favorite, Buddy Rogers goes home. Blackjack Mulligan to the finals. Stay tuned. We'll continue with our second match. Welcome back as we return to the ring and we return in this matchup. Now, between Bob Orton Jr. and Bruiser Brody, and still reeling from that upset by Blackjack Mulligan over Buddy Rogers. Another matchup that finds uh, Bruiser Brody moving forward over uh, Luthez after Luthez was disqualified after he took a chair uh, to the dome of Bruiser Brody and was DQ'd as we have seen in this tournament some upsets and some uh, strange endings as we have an unexpected semifinal between Bob Orton Jr. and Bruiser Brody. So let's take a look at their cards. Bob Orton Jr. will not be wrestling injured, so we won't do the smash with the cast, a plus three finisher. He does have the superplex, which is a plus two finisher. Uh, Brody will have the power advantage, and they are equal in agility. So Brody basically has the advantages there. Uh, in the ropes, they're equal, and in the turnbuckle, Brody will have the advantage in the ring rating. And both have B rating in the death jump. Take a look at Brody's card, uh, and they both... Uh, Orton pins at a three while Bro Brody pins at a two. Brody has that jumping knee drop, which is a plus three finisher, uh, which is a big finisher for him. Brody has uh, three uh, reversals on level one defense uh, and two on level two, while 
Orton Jr. has two on level one defense and two on level two. Uh, so Brody has that extra reversal on level one. So he has that advantage there as well. So let's get in this match. Two men face off in center ring as we roll for initiative. Orton Jr. with an eight. And Brody with an eight. They collar to elbow hook up in the center of the ring as they try to get advantage. And again, they're jockeying about there in the center ring trying to get control. And it will be Orton Jr. who goes on the offensive the forearm smash, but he he does equal agility, so he will be able to do that. As a hurt two, and he gets a release double underhook as it, Brody comes crashing to the ground, but he will leave the great ring on that down three leave. And Orton Jr. comes out of the ring and tries to hit. Brody with a steel chair, but the referee comes out and warns him to stop, but he pushes the referee aside and continues with a roll on disqualification for Orton Jr. And he will not be disqualified, so he hits Brody with the chair and rolls on level three offense as he crack, cracks Brody across the back, then power slams Brody. As Orton Jr., being the smaller man, went to some underhanded tactics with the chair. And you'll have to excuse my wrestling dogs in the background. Days one, he will toss Brody into the ropes as he goes into the ropes. He tries a shoulder tackle, but whether it works depends on which has the more powerful power rating. And that will be Brody. And Brody will ro roll on level two offense as he reverses that move. And he picks Orton Jr. up with one hand body slam, and down goes Orton Jr. And he's hurt too. Hits him with hammer punches. Bob Orton Jr. reverses the hammer punches on level one. And he gets knee smashes, choice B. And he will choose to throw him into the turnbuckle. Brody goes into the turnbuckle, whipped into the turnbuckle. But Brody reverses it, whips Orton Jr. into the turnbuckle and will roll on his rating. And as he comes off the turnbuckle, Brody lifts up that big boot and catches Orton Jr. square in the jaw and rolls on level two. And hits him with a twisting vertical suplex. Hurt two. Hammer punches once again. Hurt two. Tosses Orton Jr. into the turnbuckle. And he reverses it and tosses Brody into the turnbuckle. And Brody comes off the turnbuckle and catches Bob Orton Jr. with a skull-splitting running lariat. Rolling on three. Hurt two. He stomps in the corner as he uses those big boots. As he stomps on Orton Jr. Hurt two. Drop kick. Choice C. He's going to try that kick to the knee. It'll be a seven or lower. And it will be good. Kicking the knee of Orton Jr. And he does. Hurt two. Hurt two again. That one-handed body slam as he picks Orton Jr. up and slams him hard to the mat. Hurt two. Stomps in the corner. Orton Jr. reverses on one. Hits him with the forearm smash. Bruiser Brody reversing the forearm smash. Hits him with that twisting vertical suplex once again. And Orton Jr. will leave the ring.
as Orton Jr. is outside of the ring, he's hit by that big jumping knee from Bruiser Brody, and we will roll his count out. Target is a three. The roll is 11. Orton Jr. makes it back in the ring just in time. But Bruiser Brody rolling on level three offense. Hits him with the pile driver. And he's going to try to roll out of the ring once again. Leaving the ring. And he's hit again with that running knee. We'll roll on the count out once again. Target is a four. I, I forgot to add fatigue on that last count out. And we'll add another as he did escape the count out, but he's now at level two fatigue and Bruiser Brody rolling on level three offense. Hits him with the pile driver once again. And Orton Jr. Look, choosing to leave the ring once again. And he crawls helplessly back in the ring to avoid a count out. And he's hit with the leg drop from Bruiser Brody. And we're rolling on his pin. The target will be a five. And the roll is a seven. Orton Jr. kicks out, but that'll be now three fatigue for Bob Orton Jr. And he's hit with a clothesline, Choice G. You can either do the death jump or a tombstone pile driver. He goes for the tool stone, tombstone pile driver. So be good on a roll of eight or lower. And he hits him with the tombstone pile driver. Down three. Brody rolling on level three. Hits him with that running leg drop. Hurt two. Twisting vertical suplex. Down three. Power driver once again as Brody is pounding on Orton Jr. And we roll for the pin. This is will be on a roll of six or less. And the roll is a four, and that will be our match. After a power driver, Bruiser Brody rolls up. Orton Jr. covers him up and gets the one, two, three. And we have our finals. Black Jack Mulligan versus Bruiser Brody. Stay tuned for these exciting matchups. Blackjack Mulligan, Bruiser Brody for the Tar Hill State Federation Heavyweight Championship of the World. Welcome back to our finals of the Tar Hill State Federation Heavyweight Championship of the World, the World Heavyweight Championship. And it's a uh, unexpected matchup. I did not expect it to be a matchup between these two men, Black Jack Mulligan and Bruiser Brody. But here we are after uh, recorded wins from Black Jack Mulligan and Bruiser Brody. They have the, been the ones who have earned their right to get their hand raised for this first strapping on of the Tar Hill State Federation World Heavyweight Championship belt. So let's go to the ring. As we see these two men facing off, let's take a look at their cards. Again, Blackjack Mulligan has the Blackjack Claw. It's a plus two finisher. And he pins at a two. Uh, we do not carry fatigue into these matches. Uh, they'll both be... Uh, Strong and ready to go. They're equal in power, so uh, both Brody and Mulligan are minus three in power. Uh, Brody will have the advantage in the agility. Equal in their ropes and turnbuckle. Uh, they're equal all the way across except for the death jump, which uh, Brody is a B where Blackjack is a C. Blackjack Mulligan uh, has three reversals at level one. Uh, on rolls of one, two, and three. And he has uh, two reversals at two and six on level two. Again, he pins at a two. Brody has that 
plus three finisher in that jumping knee drop, which is pretty devastating. Uh, he has three reversals on level one as well at rolls of two, three, and six. He has two on level two at rolls of two and six, and then he pins at a two. So these both are men are both pretty well equally matched. Uh, Brody does have a higher DQ rating at, at six to Blackjack's five. So the bell rings. Our championship match starts and we'll roll for initiative. Blackjack roll of eight. Brody of four. Blackjack Mulligan goes on the offensive as he hits him with an arm drag, a wrestling move thrown by Blackjack. Brody is dazed one and a grinding arm bar. Brody reverses that on level one as he pulls out of the arm bar and flings Blackjack across the ring. Dazed one. Bruiser Brody with the backbreaker as they're equal in power. He will be able to complete that move her two and he lifts up the big man blackjack mullen one-handed body slam what a feat of strength by brody he's hurt two that'll bring up hammer punches to the head and neck of blackjack mulligan hurt two all brody so far as he hits him with a twisting vertical suplex and Mulligan comes slamming down. Pile driver follows it up with a pile driver. Hurt three. Hurt two. Stomps in the corner. Hurt two. More stomps as he uses those big boots on the legs and hips of Blackjack Mulligan. Mulligan reverses out of that, says that'll be enough of that as he hits, tosses Brody off the ropes and hits him with the lariat. Hurt two. Running stomps as both men are stomping away on each other. Brody reverses on level two and hits him with that one-handed body slam once again. Down three. And he will toss. He will choose to roll up. He's not going to toss him out of the ring. I'll roll up on level two. Hits him with the twisting vertical suplex. Hurt two. And then tosses Blackjack into the turnbuckle. The opponent tries a running clothesline, but you move. Blackjack moves out of the way and he crashes into the turnbuckle and Blackjack rolls him up. We're rolling for a pin. The target is a two and the roll is an eight. Brody kicks out, but that will be one fatigue on Brody and Blackjack rolling on level three. Slaps on the Blackjack claw. The target will be a five and the roll is an eight. Brody gets his way out of the blackjack call, but that will be another fatigue. That's two on Brody now. This blackjack is on the offensive and hits, uses that claw on his trapezius, clamps down on the neck, and Brody's going to get loose of that and roll out of the ring. But in order to meet the referee's count, he rolls back in helplessly and meets, meets a back elbow ram from Blackjack Mulligan. Down three. Blackjack again with the blackjack call. He slaps it on Brody in the center of the ring. Our target will be a six. The roll is a seven and Brody barely out of the, the hold as blackjack rolls on level three once again and slaps the claw on Brody once again. The roll, the target is a seven the roll is a seven and we have our champion blackjack mulligan made quick work of bruiser brody with the blackjack claw and we have a tar hill state 
Federation champion, world heavyweight champion with the Black Jack Claw, as he just kept the pressure on. And that was our match as Black Jack Mulligan stands in the ring holding up the belt victorious over Bruiser Brody with the Black Jack Claw finisher in this uh, star and a half finisher. So that is our tournament, and we have a new champion. Black Jack Mulligan, champion of the Tar Heel State Federation, the World Heavyweight Championship. So I hope you enjoyed this. I know I did. It was fun rolling. It's just now 7 a.m. in here, here in North Carolina. I got a busy day ahead, but it was fun to get some uh, wrestling rolled this morning from Legends of Wrestling and the Star Hill, Star Hill, Tar Hill State Federation. Hope you have a great day. Soli. Deo Glory.